Welcome to What Was He Thinking? My name is A.B. Bracewell. Today I'm going to be your personal tour guide through a man's psyche. Take this journey as we explore why a man thinks the way he thinks. Why a man acts the way he acts. And why a man feels the way he feels. No questions off limits and no topics too hard. By the end of the show, you have a better insight and a better understanding of who we are as men. Hello and welcome to another edition, another episode of What Was He Thinking? This season, as I told you, we're going to be focusing on the sexual education of Black men in America. Today, we're going to specifically be focusing on the sexual education of Black men in America and how it affects Black men as they transition transition into marriage, into relationships, and into you know commitment. Um, I have three great brothers. One of them is, are, is my blood brother, but the two are my brothers from another mother that I have a long history with. That we went to school together. We grew up together. We had just had fun, um, you know, growing from boys to men. So I'm going to have them on the show today, and they're going to give their experience. They're going to give their wisdom, their knowledge, and um, just really get their transparent moments of their sexual education as a Black man and how um, it's shaped and conditioned the way they think, the way they uh, approach relationships, and the way they approach, approach marriage. So without further ado, let me introduce my guest. Uh, my first guest is my brother, my blood brother, as I said, Sando Bracewell. My, the second one I will be bringing on is my other brother. I'm going to call him my brother, DJ Trail, you know, also Jaleel, but we're going to call him DJ Trail today. And my third brother, to Kev, Kevin Williams. Before I even get into the questions that I have for you guys, do you want to give a, a, a brief, quick introduction of who you are other than your name? Okay. Uh, like you just said, I'm, I'm, I'm his brother, older brother. Um, originally from Liberia, West Africa, raised in uh, like Jersey it. City, New Jersey. I went to school out there, elementary, high school. Moved to Philadelphia to go to Temple University where I met the other two brothers at the bottom, Kevin and Trail. Uh, we all grew up tight, um, graduated, started working, got married, had kids, bought homes, and right now we're just living that American dream, so-called. DJ Trail, I mean, my real name is Jalil Brown, also known as DJ Trail. Um, I, I got a, uh, a financial company called K&J Financial Solutions with Scandal. Things from credit to real estate to just about anything financially known, and you know, D DJ is kind of like a a side gig that turned into like my 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 one of my full time jobs. So I love it; it's a passion. I love what I'm doing, and um, I'm just happy to be here today. Yeah. So uh, again, my name is or not even again. First time, my name is Kevin. You know, I'm. Um, brothers with these guys uh you know definitely been through a lot with them uh you know i work in in uh computer it management do that type of stuff and uh and again been married what about 11 yeah 11 going on 12 years so happy to be here as well and you know good to see you guys man you know um you know it's good to be able to get together you know every now and again when we can so let's go all right, well, let, let's go. Let's go, man. Thank you guys for being a part of the show. And I'm going to jump right into the first question. And, you know, you know, there's no special order. You just jump, fit, get in where you fit in. Um, if you got a response to it, you know, let, let's hear it. First question is, what was the first time that you could remember where you became aware of sex? So, you know, what was the circumstances? How old were you? What was the story behind it? What was the situation? When the what was the first time you became aware of? All right. Well, I guess I'll go. Um, so, 
uh, it's been like, so the actual, you know, sex. So we, when I was maybe second grade, third grade, we knew of sexual activity. We we would call it humping. Like we was, we was humping, humping women, and that was our sex. We didn't know any better. We was, did you hump her? Yeah, I humped her. You know, so that was it. And then, uh, you know, then we got to junior high school. I think that's when you start getting a little more information. So, I would say junior high school, around sixth, sixth grade, seventh grade. I start really understanding. Oh, oh, that's what you. That's what they're doing. Okay. Mm, okay. Yeah, my mind is is kind of similar, but I think I was a, a little a late bloomer because I didn't I didn't really get it get it until I transferred from public school to Catholic school, and that was like sixth grade. And they used to have the closet, and every time we had to go get our coats from the closet, the coat closet, that was our opportunity to lift up a, a skirt. Oh, you lift the skirt up? Yeah, you know, me and my right hand man, you know, we lift the skirt up. Yeah. Oh, oh, man. Yeah. And you yeah, had the hot dog, and from lunch, you put it in front of you, and wings, you know, wave the hot dog like you're doing something. So I think that's when I first like stopped paying attention, like, oh, whoa, okay, Catholic school is the shoot. <laughs> <It's different. laughs> I was uh, out there and <laughs> I was uh I was super young man. I was like eight in the projects and I was over at my man's house and his sister I, I yeah, I was like eight, his sister was like ten. And then she was tall, so she was she looked she looked super older than us. And um it was just a sad situation because they they uh their fam their mom was on crack and um uh, so they ain't had no real guidance. So one day we was in the house by ourselves and uh my man was like, Yeah, you know, go go have sex with my sister. I'm like, go have sex with my sister. Like, what's what's that about? You know what I mean? Like what what? Like what I'm supposed to do? She was like, pull your pants down. Pull your privates out and just lay on top of me. And I was like, all right, you know, I'm eight, you know. I'm like, all right. And she's like, we just gotta move around. And then we moved around for like 20 seconds and then we got up. And I was like, oh, okay. Uh, I was weird. It's a, it's a, it's a sad situation, but we all <laughs> laughing. That's a shame. Kev, man. Kev, <laughs> man. It's a sad situation, man. Come on, bro. You eight years old, brother. Kev <laughs> got a bad nature, man. I'm telling you. <laughs> I'm like, it's sad. Kev, like. He <laughs> said, <laughs> you got to wiggle around. <laughs> I said, yeah, we got to wiggle around. I was like, all right. And I didn't I know what I was doing, what it was. And yeah. It was, it was weird, man. Now that I think about it, <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> now, now, big, big bro, I might, I might have to put you out there uh, mm. once or twice because you know I, I followed in your footsteps with a lot of stuff. Um, you know, where wherever you was, I was right behind. You. So. My first exposure to what sex was was following my big brother behind him and his his buddy. And uh, names are not going to be named because he already said names. Oh yeah, sure I'm, I'm knocking on the door, <laughs> <laughs> and they like come in here and sit down. Don't say nothing. And I go in the room, and there's a porno. Oh, and I'm like, <laughs> I can't remember how old that was. Uh, you know, I, I can't really remember. I probably was like 11, 12 or something like that. And, you know, that was my first time actually seeing it. Um, like, like what it was. And, you know, I, and, and yeah, that, 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 and that, that was my first, ex, first exposure. And uh, I know there was several times where we made our way back to that room and popped in VHS tapes and stuff <laughs> like that. But then you know, wow. then I'll be up late at night. We'll have cable, but we didn't have HBO. I'll be up trying to look at the scramble channels. Put it the you know the late night <laughs> stuff. See if I could see some type of picture behind the scramble. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that that's, that was like my first exposure to what sex was like the actual act of sex, like watching it do do porn. Mm. So my next question. 
and it, and it's, it's 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 good that all, that everybody has like a different experience um or a different type of exposure um because I've done this show and a lot of guys have similar but everybody got a different story and so my next question um after you was exposed to sex um after you started to learn about it and then be more interested in it what was the lesson that was taught to you and your other male friends or um, the, the conversations that you guys had about sex? What was the general lesson that, that y'all that was taught about? It? Well, I mean, it, there wasn't really no lesson, but it was more peer pressure. You know, it, uh, you know, saying, saying, you ain't getting no, you ain't getting nothing saying, hey, yes, I am, no, you're not, you're a virgin. So it was more about bragging about something you never did in your life. So, so everybody is basically lying on it. You know, we all in elementary school, but then we call it elementary school. Now they call it middle school, seventh, eighth grade, bragging about how we did this with that that girl. So it was all about trying to look cool. You know, you you don't you're not you don't, you're not learning a lesson, but you you learn how to lie, <laughs> lie about stuff that you don't know nothing about except for stuff that you watched on a video or maybe heard some other adults talking, but. That's all it really was, you know. So, that was, I mean, that that's what I got from it. When I think back on it, it was just really about bragging about stuff you didn't know nothing about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So it's similar. Uh, you know, the, the lessons was more. It was more trophy oriented. Like, yeah, I got that, and you know, it's an accomplishment that you know I I did. So it was a you know braggadocious trophy type situation. You know, and it was the same type of pressure, although, you know, we were told, you know, you can't lie, you, don't, you can't lie because, you know, things get smaller or something like that. So, <laughs> so anyway, yeah, we, so we believed it and we didn't lie and you just had to be the butt of the jokes. So, you know, you, you're not, you know, so, yeah, I, I definitely remember it being more like, a, hey, you know, I did this and, you know, you you haven't done this. I did this and that, and, you know, so it was like a braggadocious type of um, environment and a lesson, like catch up to me type situation. Yeah, it was like a, um, it was like a standard thing. You know what I mean? Like me and my homies, I probably was like one of the coolest out of them. So it was just like, it, it was like trying to maintain this reputation of being cool. Mm -hmm. Part of being cool was, you know, like, I always got a lot of Johns, you know what I mean? Like I always stayed with the prettiest John. And so it was like, yo, like if I'm, if I'm snatching these pretty Johns, I best believe I got to be hitting it. And then, you know, the, the old heads in our neighborhood back, see back then we had old heads. They don't have that now. The old heads be like, yo, yo, you bagging that. Sh like we, we would all play ball and your girl might walk up or, you know, the old head might see you with a John. Like, yo, I know you hitting that shorty. And you like, yeah, old head, like, you know, you trying to be cool for the OG. Like, yeah, I'm hitting that. And he's like, oh, that's what's up. And, you know, they giving you love. And, you know, that was that kind of affectionate, you know, you got from the OGs. Like, yeah, you know, he out, he out here looking fresh and bagging Johns and smashing, you know, that's my young boy. You know, it was like a proud moment. So, you know, yeah. reputation stands. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. It's funny because what, what all y'all saying is kind of, you're saying very similar things. And I think what Kev said, you know, very relatable. Um, you start to, you kind of taught, even if it's not a real lesson, it's something that's, um, you know, an example that you see that sex is is a trophy. Um, and, 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 and the way you gain that trophy is by getting women. So in a way, women start to look like like an object like you know they they look at as a as a, if you don't see them as fully human you almost start to look at them as you know a way to gain status or a way to to gain pleasure um because we're just taught that you know hey you get sex you're going to be considered cool or you you have sex you're going to be considered like you're going to be the man um so you know that's how they start to become objectified and 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 what any thoughts about that? Um, or am I the only one on, on that page? Um, as far as how the lessons we learn and the examples that we've seen growing up 
how it led to us objectifying women just for sex during our earlier age. I think that's I think that's that's on point. I think that's I think that's I think most men, I think most straight men can basically say that that we all had that at some point in our life, especially high school, college, you know, that that age group where bottom line is every girl is a notch in your belt. And the more notches you can get in your belt, the cooler you are, you know? And I think, yeah, I agree with you. So that's, I agree with that. I'm, yeah. I'm with that too. I, I feel like, I feel like, I don't think you really start to get out of that objectifying mold until you get older, maybe like in your thirties. Because mm. when you, when you were, when you going through college, you just, you running through Jones. Like you ain't really like, you might think like, oh, I want Shorty to be like my girl. But then you might be thinking the same thing about some other chick. You know what I'm saying? I want her to be my girl too. So, you know, then, it, then it's like, a, well, why do I, you know, what do I see in one versus the other? And it's like, oh, well, she got, you know, can we curse in this job? <laughs> no. Try not, try not to. Try not to. <laughs> try you, uh, you know, Shorty, you know, one girl might have a big booty. I'm going to say that. <laughs> You know, some other chick might have better breasts, and it's like you like, well, you know, she looked better than her, and now you back to objectifying, and I, it it still get like that. It, it's like even when you leave college, and then you trying to find the right woman, you ain't nobody. I mean, truth be told, ain't nobody trying to be no ugly John. Let's let's be realistic. You know what I mean? So I, I when I go see a John, the first thing I'm not I'm thinking of, I ain't think I'm I'm thinking of how good she looked, how her feet looked. I ain't worried about what her IQ is until I actually get to know her. Cause I might not even end up being with this chick. She might just be a one nighter and that's it. So we, you know, we don't, we don't get out that stage until we like older. I mean, it's sad, you know, but it's realistic. And, and, and for those that are from Philly, <laughs> let me just uh, translate for, for Jalil that Joan means girls. So when, <laughs> Or, or anything for that matter. Uh yeah, I mean I definitely, you know, like I don't know when you grow out of it, but you know, it's definitely you definitely ob objectifies. It's the first thing, you know, like relationships are not even taught yet. That's you know, you learn that further down the line is, you know, and then you find out, you know, relationships is this to get to you know to the object so it is just a means to the end so i know when you know the guys around the way was teaching me we you know we rarely was in relationships we just was you know trying to get relationships for lack of a better word you know so the object the objectivity was definitely like first before you you get to the point where you mature and like wait this is this is different so yeah i agree totally with all you guys okay. So when we come back from commercial break, we're going to talk about that transition. Um, as we said, like these three brothers are all married now. So we're going to explore how they transition from that mindset before marriage to where they are now. Be back in a few. We love to measure our relationship readiness by external factors. The degrees, the career, the dream house. Even though these things are great to have, it's usually the internal things that really determine if we are truly ready for a happy and healthy relationship. Are we healed from past hurt? Have we strengthened ourselves spiritually? Do we know who we are as a person? Do we have a mutuality mindset? Ready for a relationship, the self-growth guide to internal readiness addresses all of these questions. For more information, go to www.readyforrelationship.com. Welcome back to What Was He Thinking? This is the sexual education of black men in America. And when we left off, we just left off at that, making that transition from what we learned as, a, as younger boys, as young men, and how that view on sex affected and impacted the way we viewed women. But now, as I said right before we went off break, we're dealing with three married men now. So that was in their past. That's in their past, though. So nobody gonna get in trouble for this one, right? That, you know? <laughs> we different men now. We grown. 
So my first question is though, how did that mindset, how did that view on sex and women impact your marriage or impacted you when you started to look for a, a wife? How did, what did you have to change or, you know, how did it impact you while you was in the marriage? I, I guess I, I'll go. So, you know, first, you know, before we even got to marriage, then it, it was more relationship. So just learning and understanding how to be in a relationship or a monogamous relationship was that bridge between what we were doing and getting to marriage. So you spent years doing that, like relationship, monogamous relationship. And I think that was for me the bridge because and so, you know, until like I see my close friends, you know, actually, you know, Sando was one of them that was in like a relationship. I'm like, what are we doing? And that's when I was like, well, maybe this is what we're supposed to be doing. So I know in the beginning, like he definitely was one of the people that influenced me to say, hey, settle down and be in a relationship. And then so you start to see the benefits of actually being in a relationship, having that one person there for you. So I think that, for me, that was the bridge to um to get into the point where in marriage, you, you know, you, you're doing that. So. Sando told you that? Well, no, nah, like by, by example. So, yeah, yeah, so, so, uh, I appreciate that. Yeah, it, 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 so stand, not those, I mean, not those stand, exact yeah. words. No, he didn't help me. I, I leave my example. Yeah, he was. In, you know, he was in a relationship, and then you know, my my roommate, my other guy was in a relationship, and you know, these are the guys I hung with, and they both in relationships and, and double dating and stuff, and you know, so it was. <laughs> <laughs> so I just started seeing it, you know, the benefits of, of that and say, hey, let me give it a try. So I think um, we learn through trial and error, really. When you when you with that 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 woman in the beginning, like like Jalil said, it's all about the looks. You know, we, we, we originally jump into it for the looks. And then after you get past the looks, then you get to see what they're about. Once you get to see what they're about, if you guys have that in common, then you start spending more and more time together. And as you spend that time together, you start seeing your likes and your dislikes, what you like, what you don't like about each other, and you adjust. And the more time you spend together, it's almost like um, slowly pushing all the other people out, you know, because at one time we all have multiple chicks here, there, and the other way. But as you spend more time with that one person, those people start to see Oh, I'm not hearing from this person as much. I wonder what happened to them. And then they find out oh, he in something serious. After a while, they all start falling off. And and and, and the, the, the woman you wish, she she pays attention. You know, she'll notice, like, okay, he 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 I see he's not getting as many back then. I had the beeper, you know, and I had the little white box call ID. Oh, I don't see that many female names on that call ID no more. His beeper not going off no more. He's not saying I'll be right back no more. You know, and they pay attention to all those little changes as the years go on. You know, so I think that's the. It all starts with that quality of time and getting to know each other, and eventually, y'all, well, it's up to the man really you know, to make that step and be like, "Look, I, I think I'm ready." You know, that's, that's my experience. I mean, with me, it. I don't think it had anything to do with like a sex transition. With me, what what made me start to settle down was probably between my first and second marriage. So, because even, even in my first marriage, even though I ain't have set that much of a great wife, I still was, I, I, I'm sorry. I, I, I still was, I was still doing my thing. You know what I'm saying? And was like, you know, I, I, did, I did what a husband was supposed to do financially um, and physically. And, you know, taking care of her kids, you know, and things of that nature and putting her in a home and things in that nature. But I felt like with me and her, it just I, I I don't think I was out of that 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 playing stage. I think like I was like a I was like a juggler in the circus. I just had women. And I don't think I was done with that yet. And I think I got married too early. But the marriage taught me a lesson when when it was over about you know, this is not the right way of doing things. And then when I, I even took a sabbatical from women and was like, I'm not going to really be talking to women like that until not, and not, not in a sense of like, like I was still knocking chicks down, 
but in the sense of I'm not going to be in a serious relationship. What kind of sabbatical? What kind of sabbatical is that, man? I was in the relationship sabbatical. You know what I mean? Like, and and I and I was letting chicks know, like, yo, like I'm not. I just got out of a marriage. I'm not trying to be in a relationship. You know, we, you know, you want to get up, we can get up, but. Other than that, man, I'm like, I didn't want the relationships. I didn't want none of that. I wanted to focus on what kind of person I am. And then when I found out what person I was, then I got with my wife now. And, and you know, I mean, and, and it's rocky. Relation, you know, marriages are rocky. But guess what? You you rather find somebody you can pick it and deal with it. You know what I mean? So for so for me, it was just the, it was just the 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 bad marriage that taught me this is how good marriage is supposed to be. Okay. okay. Uh, before we start to wrap it up, for a single man that's trying to gain control over his sexual urges and looking to transition into, you know, that commitment, that marriage stage, what advice would you give that man? <laughs> <laughs> I, was, Honestly, I would say, man, okay. yo, just... Yo, just live your life. Don't transition. If you if you if you if you feel like it is it's hard, like you want to transition and it's hard, nah, be single. Get all that out. Get all the threesomes, the foursomes, you know, the swinging. Get all that out. Cause once you're in the relationship, that's it. You can't go, you can't go back and be like, oh, I gotta go do this one more threesome. You know what I mean? Okay, I agree. That's basically what I was gonna say. Like you you can't just stop it. You can't just stop it. It's got to be. It's got to be something that's that's going to happen naturally, because anything you force is it, it, going to probably come back, regardless of what it is. But especially when it comes to that, you just you got to just let it happen, happen naturally. You can't just say, "Okay, today I'm gonna stop. I'm gonna stop messing around and just get focused." It, it doesn't work like that. You get with somebody and you know, bump heads. Now, next thing, first thing you're gonna do is what? Or oh, that chick, mm-hmm. you know. You think that's the answer because you forced it. You didn't just let it happen naturally, but I agree with you. Yeah, um, that's that's tough. Thing. Yeah, I think you, um, you can't. Yeah, I agree. It's forcing it is hard because then it's going to come off as a restriction and we don't like restrictions. We don't like to be restricted. So what's going to happen, I, I think, for advice, you have to understand. I think that the person should understand that chances are the urges won't go away you know it's just how you handle the urges you know what i'm saying so you can don't think that you're not ready because you have the urges how you determine if you're ready is how you handle the urges can you turn the urges down can you say no do you use that as your crutch like you know like you guys were saying you know when it's something going bad i'm gonna just go to x or go to z you know like if you can handle your urges and learn how to handle your urges then you know then you can move forward but if you still can't handle your urges and you're and you can't stop, then I think like these guys saying that, you know, maybe you want to, you know, continue, continue being single. But uh, but at the same time, you got to realize what you know, what you're leaving behind. It's not too many great people in this world. It's not too many great women in this world. So, you know, I mean, you just if you sacrifice in these great women to play around, then when you get to it, you know, a certain situation in your life and you can't find any great women or anybody, you know, that you want to be with, then you sort of put it, you know, it comes back to you. So that's that's tough to give a, a young man, you know, advice on that. Well, there you have it, man. Thank you. I just want to thank you guys for being a part of the show, coming with your wisdom and your perspective on the sexual education of Black men in America. I'm sure people are going to sit back and watch this episode and they're going to learn from it. They're going to grow from it. And I just want to give you guys another thank you um, for taking out the time out of your busy schedules and being a part of it. Um, For all those that are viewing, um, I appreciate you. I love you. From What Was He Thinking? I'm A.B. Bracewell, the host. Have a good night. God bless. On the next episode of What Was He Thinking? We're going to have the ladies to dive deep into our minds. They have some thoughts that they have to add to the conversation.